The most impactful thing I've done for my career is embrace becoming a renaissance data scientist. It's a term that I've completely bastardized from the term renaissance man, used to describe these extraordinary individuals who are elite in many different areas. Da Vinci is the perfect example. He was a ridiculous painter, engineer, architect, sculptor, and more. A renaissance data scientist, on the other hand, is somebody well-versed all along the data life cycle, which is, uh just as cool. I'd like to see Michelangelo whip up a Tableau dashboard. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to be telling you the advantages of being a full stack data scientist, regardless of what your specialty is and how exactly to become one. Something that's vital to know and keep in your mind is this shape right here. This rectangle represents your knowledge base. So when we turn it like this, we have somebody with a large array of surface level knowledge, but not much depth, which can be useful in a managerial capacity, but not for our case. What you probably think you need to be is this, someone who's specializing in one of these three disciplines and spends all of their time in the tech stack required by each and only learning what is needed for their discipline. Let me be clear, there's nothing wrong with this, but you are leaving a lot on the table in terms of what jobs you can apply for and you're also making yourself a lot more replaceable. But when you combine these two, you have something great. You're a specialist in one area, but you're fluent in many others. Now let's break down what the advantages of this are, what tech stack is needed to achieve this and how you can practically learn this. At the start of 2024, I switched jobs and got a big raise in a job I actually wasn't trained for. It was a data engineering role and on paper, I was a data scientist. My odds of getting this mid to senior level role as a data engineer should have been fairly low and they would have been had I not been training myself to be a renaissance data scientist. The job market is always changing. One minute everybody wants to be a data scientist, then a data engineer, then it's all about ML ops. But being full stack isn't just about future proofing your role. It's also about making yourself valuable no matter what the market trends are. And right now there's a huge demand for people who can work across the life cycle. So being full stack makes you a holistic problem solver. You understand everything from sourcing data all the way through to creating an and visualization. Employers love this because they know wherever they put you along this cycle, you'll be fine. You won't need a detailed explanation and a lot of catching up. You'll be able to quickly get into providing value rather than just learning simple concepts. Maybe more important than just implementation is that you understand problems that your colleagues are going to face. You may be a data scientist, but you've done some data analysis work. So you know problems that frequently come up for data analysts when they're getting data from data scientists and you can address that before it becomes an issue. And this is why your colleagues are going to love working with you. You're literally making their lives so much easier because when they give you data or when they receive data from you, you understand the convention and what sort of framework they're using, how they're thinking about the problem, so you can quickly get up to speed on the project with them. You're also fluent in the different verticals of data. So when a data scientist is explaining why they need their data structured in a specific way, you're not just like, ah, not my problem, I'm a data engineer, you can sort that out. No, you can have a conversation because you actually understand understand the struggles that they're going through and you can quickly come to a solution. So how do you become a renaissance data professional? It depends on if your specialty is as a data scientist, engineer or analyst. And I'll be trying to explain how you can adapt this framework for all three of these. The beauty is regardless of which one of these three you're specialized in, DataCamp has you covered as they have courses to address all the different verticals. DataCamp is actually sponsoring this video and I've actually worked closely with them to get anybody who uses my link down below 25% off for a platform that's already pretty affordable. To become a full stack data scientist, you must build your base as just a data scientist first, which means either committing one to three years to university and getting a degree in data science. But I've already explained in this video my issues with going to university for data science. But if you are going the self-taught route, which makes sense given the speed that our industry is evolving at due to AI and all sorts of different factors, data camp is actually a really good place to start. On the coding front, you would start with Python, of course, beginning with basic libraries like NumPy and Pandas before going onto your machine learning ones. Honestly, the exact order is too long to go into in this video, but essentially, if you were to take this certification in data science, everything would make sense because not only would you get the most vital skills that you need pretty quickly, it's also a lot cheaper than going to university. It's no secret, when I was using DataCamp around four years ago, it had some major problems that I took issue with, but I feel like now, for the most part, they've been addressed. The first of these is whenever you are stuck on a problem, they only had had fixed hints to tell you how to figure out a problem and if you couldn't get the answer from those hints they'll just show you the answer. But now with generative AI of course you can use DataCamp's assistant and ask it to explain the code to you so you're not just getting a wall of this is what you should have done 
The assistant will explain what you did wrong, why it's wrong, and what you should change in your next approach, which I think is super useful. The other problem I had was just people speed running through this, just like going next, 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 just so they can get a certificate as quick as they could. But with the certification now, there's an exam at the end of it where you actually have a timed exam. And in that exam, you go through a real world example before you can earn that certification that is recognized within the industry, which I think is pretty cool. Something which you will find useful as well is we're all at different stages. So maybe you have a little bit of experience in Python or maybe you know nothing at all. So within the data scientist certification, you can actually build your learning plan. So let's say you knew a little bit in one specific area of Python and wanted to spend more time working on your weaknesses. You could actually customize your learning plan and build that in so that you get really robust at where you're already weak. So to become a Renaissance data scientist, you would start with a certification as a data scientist. And then after that, I want you to get good at the basics of SQL, as well as the basics of a visualization. I like Tableau, not Power BI, but whatever. But here's the important part. No matter what your vertical is, I want you to go all the way in that vertical. So if you wanna be a full stack data engineer, go all the way with data engineering. And by all the way, I mean either go to university for three years, get your degree, or do a certification as a data engineer or data analyst, whatever your main focus is, go all the way with that. But with the supplementary skills that you need to become full stack, be very tactful and pick specific modules that you want to dig deeper into so that you get a really, really strong foundation in the basics of those supplementary skills. This graph is actually a great way to visualize the learning process. The most seismic of leaps you make in the learning process are in the first 20 to 30 hours of learning, but it's the mastery part of learning that takes years and years. It's why a master's is only one year and a PhD is over three to five years. So in learning our supplementary skills, we want to make the most of this zone. What I'm saying is you wouldn't do a certification in data science, then a certification in data engineering, then one in data analysis as well. You'd get your Python one, then go to the courses page and pick the highest impact modules. And I think these are a great example of what would be great for SQL. And then after that, you'd also pick the highest impact modules for your visualization like Tableau. And I think these are great examples of the ones that I would recommend. But how much time should you spend learning each of these? Well, it's actually a valid question. And assuming you're going from scratch, I like to use the 12 week year mindset, which I've completely stolen from this book over here, where for each three month quarter of the year, you select a couple of key result areas and you apply all your focus on those for those three months. So for the first three months, 100% of your learning time should be allocated to the main skill for your vertical. So for the data scientist, that would be Python. The second three month spell is where things get really exciting because now you're introducing a new skill 40% of the time. In this case, SQL. So if you finish the data scientist certification, you're now practically building projects in Python, but at the same time, you're taking those specific modules to learn new skills in SQL. In the third quarter, we're getting dangerous now because we've been building in Python and learning in SQL, but now we combine the two of those. We're still picking up more and more complex skills in Python and maybe even new libraries, but alongside learning in Python, we're still building projects in Python, but now we have those valuable SQL skills. So we aren't confined to building projects in Python than alone. We're ensuring that every project we do also shows off our data engineering skills in SQL before connecting to Python. For example, you connect to some free API to get some data, land that and transform it in SQL, then build out some sort of model for it in Python. But alongside that, we're dedicating a significant amount of time to learning Tableau as well, roughly 20%, to add that final layer to our stack that we need. In the final quarter, we're now having full on fun. We're still dedicating most of our time to the backbone, but we have a much more even split across our stack. But now you have options when you build projects, because as much as possible, you want to use all of your skills across the technologies. And now instead of just the fundamentals, you can strategically pick up new skills anywhere across your stack by selecting the most important skills you need depending on where you are in your career and also what just interests you because now you have all your basics down. And this last stage pretty much goes on indefinitely. So for example, for me, because of the world that we live in now, I took this course in LLMs because I just believed it would be a useful skill to have and it interested me. So I could afford to dedicate time towards that because I knew my basics everywhere else were covered. So to stop this video being eight hours long, I won't go through what this process looks like for full stack data engineers and data analysts as well. You can sort of extrapolate from what I've said, but if you want explicit
explicit instructions on how to do it and maybe even specific data cam modules you should take as a full stack data scientist, analyst, engineer, comment down below and I'll put it in my next newsletter with a downloadable PDF so that you have a literal step-by-step -step guide. It doesn't matter what your vertical is, being full stack just means you're fully fluent along the data science lifecycle. We're in the information age and the information is just waiting for you to go out there, grab it and learn it. And just a reminder to check out Data Camp, 25% off with my link down below if this journey of becoming full stack is something that interests you at all.